What up, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Vinny Dangerous himself, and I am back with another episode of the Dangerous Minds podcast, and we are on September 11th, 2016, and I was going to do a 9-11 themed episode, but I had a talk with a friend of mine, and he just made me realize I don't want that beef right now. So I'm going to, you know, just bypass that one. We're going to talk about something else. Uh, maybe next year, but right now I'm not going to touch on that. But what we will be talking about today is a topic that's a little bit more near and dear to my heart, and I couldn't do this one by myself. So I would like to introduce y'all for the second time on the Dangerous Minds podcast, my dad, rapper and performer, and uh, Facebook uh, journalist, uh, Mr. Macedon King. All right, glad to be here again. And what I wanted to talk about today stems from the beef, well, the conversation that's been brought up after uh, Pete Rock has spoken out and has responded to Lil Yachty and other uh, whack rappers like him, that have come out and have talked bad about the older generation. They called them old heads and talking about how they're hating on the youth. Pete Rock spoke up earlier this week and it has created this nice little debate and has caused this topic today to be taught, titled Old School versus New School. And earlier in the week I put up a post on Instagram on the Dangerous Minds podcast Instagram page if you're not following it follow at Dangerous Minds podcast all one word on Instagram and I got a lot more responses a lot more divided responses people that are on the side of Lord Yachty and the people that are on the side of Pete Rock so me and my dad today are going to bring in our uh Put in our two cents on the topic at hand. Well, I'm going to start off with this. There's no old school versus new school. Once again, that's being led by white media. It's mm-hmm. same thing as when Biggie and Pac had a falling out. One song comes out, and instead of being between two artists, white media jumps on and they run with it. So this has been going on for a long, long time. It just it didn't start here. But this whole old school and new school, that's that's trash. The problem that I see with what's going on is we're dealing with quality of content. And that's it. The whole purpose when I came when when I got with hip hop and becoming an MC myself was because of a love of quality music and then after that if i wanted to be an mc i had to have lyricism and and quality content so when you have artists like designer and action bronson who are actual clones of other artists Mm -hmm. i think you're being robbed as a consumer and i and if you don't mind you know take you know somebody taking your money and giving you trash product i can't stop you but at the end of the day, I, I'm going to call that out. Yeah, it is a debate on quality of content. It's not really old school versus new school because there are a lot of artists that are coming out now, like uh, Kendra Lamar, J. Cole, Wale. You know, it's a lot of the guys that are coming out in this generation that gets a lot of props from the older generation, and they're really carrying hip hop into the future the correct way. Uh, the problem is, I. You know, I thought about with um, my podcast episode about the Double XL freshman cover from this year, and ever since that cover came out, the people that are pretty much the wackest ones on the cover are the ones that get the most press. Twenty One Savage, Lil Yachty, Little Uzi Vert, uh, and Kodak Black and Designer. Like those are the ones that you see all over the blogs and the web, the hip hop websites and the music websites, um, all over the magazines. Those are the guys that are getting 
pushed to the forefront and all of the dope artists that were the very few that was on the cover you don't really hear too much of a peep from them yeah and that's when and we talked about that uh before we started recording that started with the payola era people you know these are things that were transitions in the culture that they don't shine no light on because you know they control and that's the whole part about it you the content up and really until this this era into your era has been controlled and so before when we first came out with hip hop artists, if you look back, a lot of the, you know, it was new. And so a lot of incredible artists with incredible music was getting in. It really wasn't a lot of bad. And that's just the bottom line is it's been eras where when you turn the radio on, it was just hit after hit after hit. And you didn't have to keep replaying the same songs over and over again. You just had so much to choose from of a wide variety. It wasn't just one type. And then, the internet has come and on dead end hip hop. I watched and they were talking about that. The kids now have more ways to express themselves with YouTube and Snapchat and things of that nature, which is true. But at the same time, they said it opened up the gate for more artists to get in to be heard. And it's not their fault that their audience is liking their content and that they get put on, but that's not the case because if, a record label has to pay, and in this case, it was Iggy Azalea. They paid the record labels, I mean, the radio stations, millions of dollars to keep her played 20, 20 times or something like a very high number mm-hmm. of times. And if you listen to most radio stations, you hear about five, maybe six songs each day, just repetitive. It, it beats your head up. And so that's we're like, which one? I oh, know I was just going to say like uh, last year when my radio went out, well, like my CD player and my um, adapter went out and all I had to listen to was the radio. I could count and it's not like I'm in the car all day riding. Mm-hmm. So the fact that, you know, maybe getting in for work, getting in the car for work, getting in the car, maybe to drive somewhere for my lunch break and then driving back, you know, clocking back in and then leaving work to go home. I, I, I might have, I think this time last year, that song Lifestyle was on the radio yeah. real heavy. And I heard that song maybe like okay. three or four times a day. Like maybe even more than that, depending on how long I was in the car. And that just doesn't make any sense with all the music that is out here. That they yes. play maybe the same handful of songs over and over again. Like there's been plenty of times, like anybody can you know, relate to this. Like you've heard a song that uh, you first heard it like when they first played it and you thought it was just so bad, but then they play it a hundred million times. And now you're like, you know, you start to know the lyrics and you start bobbing to it a little bit because I mean, it's almost like you feel like you don't have another, have any other choice, but to get with the song. Cause it's stuck in your head now. Yeah, you can't. I mean, and that was lifestyle with me. I remember that because when that song came out, I didn't understand nothing. He said, I still don't even understand the full, content of that song it took a while to even understand the chorus and then now i'm but i I know it when it come on now Mm -hmm. that doesn't make the song good that makes me basically i was abused you know by the radio station and if you listen to you know um in north carolina we got one oh i mean fairville we got 104 k104 we got foxy 99 and then we got 106 and when i'm in the car with your brother's they're 10 and 11. I can't even put it on 99 because it's the same repetitive on drugs, hypersexuality and all of that, which, you know, I understand that, you know, it teaches on and I understand that. But when we have artists like in Vogue, Erica Badu, um, let me get uh, Red Man, uh, EPMD, let me see what else. Um, who else? Uh, CC Peniston. This is so many different artists from so many different genres, and that that can be played to pull something up so that the the youth can know about their history. But ninety nine K K one hundred four and Fox ninety nine are those type of stations that only play songs that have come out within a month, maybe two months. Mm-hmm. If your song has come out more than two months ago and what have you, you don't hear it no more. It's so many artists, uh, 
what was that? The Hurricane Chris theory that me and you came up with. And we were saying, okay, let's see how long before he disappears. And then, and if most people who are familiar with Hurricane Chris hear me say his name, it's probably the first time you thought of this, that guy in, in years. years. <laughs> you know? And we so predicted that, it too, but I yep. think he came out like, let's say like 2005. By 2006, he was, he was completely gone. irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, by my bad, because he came out with it. He tried to come out with another single. It didn't do as well as the the, the cookie cutter style that he came out with, and he's yeah. gone. And so you're just getting thrown trash. It's like a monkey in the zoo throwing doo doo through the bars, <laughs> and you just get hit in the face with it. You're like, okay, well, if this is all I got, I'm gonna take it. So it's it's to me, it's just quality of music. It, I don't I don't um who, who is uh, like I said before, designer when Panda came out. When it, when I first heard Panda, I did not understand everything that he was saying. But the energy of the song, the sound effects with his little thing he does now that he's really stopped doing it on social network, just leaving in the music that just, yeah. just, that's that not the use. That was the only part I liked for the song for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. So you know, I'm bobbing to my head, but I'm not invested in the song. Then I heard then the lyrics. The the lyrics are about what I said before about four to six bars, and they're just in repetition. Constantly, mm-hmm. constantly, and but that's not a bad song, and I can actually digest his that one song at this point better than I was Future, who he cloned, and yeah. I think that it, so all the elements from being a whack MC, not having real strong writing ability, not having originality, biting somebody's style with the, all of these laws that were laid down to ensure you know that. We had great artists and great content like Black Thought. I mean, people don't even listen to this brother's album. And he's put out incredible works of art, in my opinion. Yeah. Talk about a wide variety of things. Just, I mean, uh, how can you not know Black Thought in the roots? I just can't understand that. And so about that's... The Fall Apart is amazing. It's an amazing album. And that's just like one of the gems that fell off. Pete Rock, to me, has a right to say what he's saying because he was a he's a producer of CL Smooth. Troy, you know what I'm saying? They reminisce over you. Classic. He, he put on cuz I don't know all his production credits, but I just know the the biggest one for me was that he put on cuz doesn't he have production credits with uh Nas's Illmatic album? Yeah, oh, yeah, one of the yeah, arguably the greatest uh, hip hop album of all time. I know people may not like that, but if you put Illmatic on right now, it, it doesn't sound dated. You will mm-hmm. still rock to it. It just has energy that has not been duplicated at that level. And I'm talking about through Biggie. I'm a Biggie fan, a Pac fan. Um, you know, uh, Red Man. Red Man is an incredible lyricist who is so consistent. So underrated. And, so people underrated. Throw, people throw that underrated thing around a lot, but Red Man is a true example Truly. of somebody that's un, underrated. And I think that's Eminem's daddy. And I think that yeah. you know wouldn't even have an Eminem without a Red Man. But if you don't know, if you haven't heard there, uh, there's a dark side. If you haven't heard Time for Some Action, if you haven't heard that, you wouldn't understand it. But if you listen to his catalog, you, you know he's not gonna have all hits. There are some fumbles there as far as the songs, but lyrically nobody's been more consistent than him. And so that's what the youth are missing is, you know, examples of what quality is. It's not always about the beat. Sometimes it's just about his the lyrics. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an artist that is, you know, that's that's uh lyrical and conscious. There was there was fun music back in the in the nineties and the eighties. So it wasn't just all seriousness. It wasn't all you know, grimy and dark. Like it, it was some fun, but it was still good quality music. Like I think about uh, the video that I saw on you. It was it was on Facebook not too mm-hmm. long ago, and it was um, Ninth Wonder, and he was talking about the difference between whack artists from the '90s and the '80s, and then whack artists of today. And he said that they had their whack artists. That he named off like Vanilla Ice. Yeah. MC Hammer, um, Young MC, like he, you know, he named off like Sir Mix a lot. There was some guys that would just, you know, they put out like that one or two songs, but for the most part, like the rest of the category is pretty ca- um, catalog, ca- uh, catalog, catalog. Yeah, I don't know, I got tongue tied. Uh, 
<laughs> the rest of that catalog was pretty trash, and they got you know it was just they were known as clowns. They wasn't getting the difference is they're the one they wasn't getting the magazine covers, and they're not getting uh all the exposure that all the whack rappers of our generation get now. Well, I have to t- I have to pa- pause right there. Mm-hmm. Hammer was one of the biggest artists to come out at the time when he came out, and Young MC, that's another one. Young MC was one of the you know he was whack, but that uh, Busta Move took off. So I mean, it was always those one hit wonders. It's always been one hit wonders. Okay, Hammer had more. Matter of fact, people kind of people don't like Hammer, and you know we I told you that one of the times corporate America got me was when I had some polka dot Hammer pants. You know, I'll admit that <laughs> <laughs> they were brown and you know beige polka dots, but I was fresh back then. Anyway, <laughs> um, they had we had that, but the one thing I'm going to say about Hammer that first album that he put out actually was off the chain. I mean, you know, people, for some reason, that's a whole nother show you could do is why we hate to dance, but yet we love to dance. You know, we yeah. I, I grew up dancing, you know, so when Hammer came out, that was a dance album, but it was actually some hard content when he first came out, when he was wearing his suits and his, his uh, gangster attire and all of that, and just dancing. Then it got corny when it was, you know, when they upped the ante and then he had the Jerry Curl and then the sequence and all that. Then it got corny. But that original album was dope. But yeah, Young MC is is basically one of the Busta Move artists that was trash. I couldn't stand the song. Uh, wow, what was that mean? Uh, MC Brains. I don't care what nobody say. He was trash. Uh, <laughs> you probably know who that guy is, but you know those. There are artists from the era that was always been one hit wonders. They had their songs. They came out. But uh, I think what Ninth Wonder was saying was that we never. The community never held them up on the pedestal. We said, "Okay, you got oh, your yeah. hit. Yeah, we got you. You got your hit. We happy you making your money. You know, if the song come on the radio, I may or may not change the station, but you not no top top tier MC. Nowadays, addicts are the number one. You know, go to style like you know uh, the song Kodak Black has with oh boy talking about because my jaw keep locking. I know you're talking about." Using that, what is it, ecstasy? Things makes your jaw, your jaw lock up or something like that. Yeah, I think so. I think that is ecstasy. So that's addict hop. That's not, that's not hip hop. If you're doing songs where you talk about selling drugs all the time, especially crack, that's crack hop. So you're, you're not adhering to the elements of, um, which I want to kind of touch back on. We spoke about that too. The elements or the reason for hip hop is where this all began in the first place. It was to stop gang violence. It was to, because there was a lot of gangs killings in New York and, you know, then African band came down and they started having the block parties to pull the community together. And, and it's cool to talk about, you know, being on block and all that, you know, to a degree, but when you're glorifying it, like you're winning, then you're not doing hip hop. You're not, you're doing a community a disservice when you're talking about taking drugs as it's a pastime when Lil Wayne had several seizures trying to run that lean phase. Eminem ran through the Oxycontin phase, almost uh, OD'd. And you want people to follow in your footsteps because you want to keep speaking about doing drugs as if that's something to uh, aspire to. And I think that as a fan, um, I think you, you, you're getting trash rap. And I don't care how catchy it is. You should be offended. You're paying money. You're you're spending your time and you're investing in these guys and giving them hits and likes and pushing them up there. And they're giving you one song through an entire album for three or four albums. One song talking about the same stuff. Migos is like that. I, I can't stand Migos. Hey, that's the yeah, same song. I was, I was telling my brothers the other day, like when they played a new song from them, I was like, man, that sounds just like the old one. Yeah. Uh, Ray Schmurter is falling into that, too. And then I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a Ray Schmurter fan. That first album, I was surprised, but they were very creative and um, so forth in a sense of how the beats were made and how they mm-hmm. approached the songs. So, yeah, they got me. Um, now we're, we're walking into album number two. And although, once again, the beats are uh, creative, we're really just talking about the same old thing. And I'm like, OK, there's no depth. And they're talking about taking Zan. So, you know, like I said, I don't 
I wasn't. I can't have my ten year old and my eleven year old listening to that music because as soon as they figure out that you're talking about taking drugs, they might follow along in the footsteps. Uh, people talk about smoking weed, and I, to be honest with you, I don't have no problem with that. People talk about drinking alcohol. I don't really have no problem with that. If people start when people started talking about um, taking, you know, doing crack, you would look at them crazy. If you, if, you know, just think about it. Um, if anybody came out right now and said that they was having a good time smoking crack, you bug out. But yeah. after that, though, but you got Molly, which is a mixture of crack, heroin, and a, a conglomerate of different things. Mm-hmm. And you got people smoking. Uh, what's that other stuff? Oh, you got people doing lean. I just keep it real to the to the popular drugs, and people are you know actually letting addicts tell them that taking this stuff is good, and then going out and on top of that, they even disrespect you even more. They're going out and saying that they don't even do it. So I think that you know the the artists don't care about their fans anymore like they used to. And then they're just abusing an easy way to make a song by just, you know, going to the lowest level, the lowest, the lowest ideas and the lowest concepts. And because they're easy to do and it's controversial. And, you know, if you talk about sex and drugs, it's just for some people that's very entertaining. And Mm -hmm. I just think that that, that's a disservice. I I don't know. Uh, That's my main thing is that, you know, you're getting abused by the corporations. You're getting abused by the artists who don't even want to try. I mean, look at Kendrick Lamar's album. He, a lot went into that album. J. Cole's album, a lot went into that album. He sat down and gave a lot to his fans. Uh, Wale. Wale don't really get props like Wale should. That pineapple, what is it, pineapple? What's uh, that song? Pineapples. Oh, man. That's, that's like one of the best... You, you understand what I'm saying? That's that song as far as a you know because you know you talked about it before. That's not really too many romantic songs out. Yeah, that's like one of the few times where a brother was really, you know, giving it to the ladies, but they rather let Chris Brown talk down to him and trash him out and throw drugs oh, on him. I'm gonna mean, I'm I'm bring that up in another episode. <laughs> with Chris Brown. I, I think that rant about Chris Brown on Facebook is kind of like what inspired me to want to do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what, I mean, so what do you think on. about? Um, what did you say? I was going to ask you what, what was the rant about with Chris? Was it about the girl that that tried to set him up or something? No, else? no, no. This was like uh, last year when his album came out, uh, and I was just so disappointed, and I was, I was just really irritated at how where R and B was basically getting taken. Oh, and, man, you know, is how bad. You know, and then, you know, top it all off, it was an album that was pretty much, like, dedicated to his daughter, but it had so much misogyny and, you know. Oh, no, he stuff. do that. He did that for real. <laughs> yeah, like, because, you know, it's named after his daughter. And No, I did. I not, I stopped following Chris Brown. You know, I was a big Chris Brown fan when he came out. He was, cl- he was not, he was clean cut. Let's just put it like that. He was clean cut. He had so much promise. He was, but then it, he. I don't know. I, and like you, you said it to me before. You was like, after what happened with Rihanna, and it, not just what happened, but how the community just continued to beat him up about it, that he mm-hmm. kind of never recovered from that part. And I think he's been lashing out ever since, you know. And uh, yeah, but his his stuff is just so bad now. It's just, as far as content wise, it's just, just it's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, it's just bad music and just not quality. That's so- bottom line. I was going to ask you, so I saw the video of, it was during a Hot 97 interview, by the way, and mm-hmm. it was uh, Little Uzi Vert, and he talked about how, um, he, he basically, because they tried to turn on a DJ Premier beat, it was, I think it was Mass Appeal, and they asked him to do a freestyle, and I think this is where the whole Lil Yachty rant came from, and... um he basically dissed it. He like, it's one thing if you don't want to rap over it, but he just straight dissed it. He said that I'm not rapping over these old beats. I'm too young to know what that is. And you know, like soon you're going to get a newer generation of artists that are going to be coming up to this radio station and not wanting to freestyle over them old beats. Well, like, I I was going to see how you felt okay. about it. Cause he also mentioned him and uh Lil Yachty both said, you know, this little phrase in their interview 
basically it's like a, a phrase going around with amongst themselves talking about if you old you old old is when you hating. Yeah, I mean that's that's basically saying I don't have no skills. That's all that is. You, I don't have no skills, and you, you just can't rap over that beat. As a you know, one skill once again back to the quality of music and quality and paying attention to the culture. How can you not know about DJ Premier? One, he's still an active producer. He was put out recent content. Royce the Five Nine being the most recent, uh, one of the most recent. Excuse me. So for him, for you to put on the beat, you're not studying your history. You just one. It's again showing you don't care anything about the culture. You're screaming hip hop. You're screaming that you know we hating on whatever. We just saying you don't care nothing about the culture. Make another. Why don't you take the attic hop and say that what you make is attic hop? You're not doing hip hop if you don't care about the culture because hip hop is about caring about the culture and caring about the people. So him not want to rap on that beat just show he he'll back and see. And that's the bottom line. He's whack and he's not talented and and he probably was so doped up. You know, and he just don't have nothing going on in his head that he can't sit there and put together, at least try to put together some aspect of a freestyle. You know, everybody can't do it. You know what I mean? And yeah, like he um, because I thought about with um, because actually he got called out by another person. Um, Actually, another person that was on the freshman cover. He got called out by Anderson Pack, and Anderson Pack is an R&B singer. But he is, uh, you know, in tune with hip hop, and he acknowledges his hip hop influences. Yeah, so he called out uh, Lil Uzi Vert and saying that, you know, you know, you're not really a part of hip hop if you don't respect where it came from, if you don't respect uh, what came before you. You know what? I just thought about something. It, it was Little Dicky on that album cover? Yeah, I mean, he on was, that on that mix. Uh, he was on that um, magazine cover. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take your fans deep here for a second. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the game has been whitewashed anyway. They don't want real artists to come through the gate that have actual talent. Most record labels are hiring the worst examples of black artists that you can find, and that's just the truth about it. Where did Jay Z uh, picked up J Cole and? The, uh, Kendrick came through his own gate through TDE, through hard work, right? And I can name them. But if you look at uh, what's your boy, uh, Kodak Black, if you look at Lil Yachty, I don't even know where these people came from, to be honest with you. They just mm -hmm. pop up out of nowhere with a single, and then boom, they're on. But it's basically the same thing. But then look at Lil Dicky, who had one of the best singles and one of my favorite songs, I would I would tell y'all bump it any time, and that saved that money. The concept of the song, the creativity pays homage. If you look at Logic, if you look at uh, G Easy, if you look at uh, Snow the Product, if you look at uh, even Action Bronson's Ghostface Killing, Stealing, Clone, Whack. I ain't even going into too much in that. But if you look at that, why are those lyricists, yeah. Matt Miller? Even though he talked about a lot of dope. See, I told, I threw him in last. I know he talked about a lot of dope. But, and he's an addict hot rapper, but they're more lyrical. Why is it, how many, how many white rappers out are very lyrical and home in on the 90s concepts and are raping them, really? And how many uh, black artists are just full of trash content? And just look at, look at the playlist. That's just, that's the area in. They're, they're trying to push you out if you have good content. The same way they pushed out J. Cole, didn't give him no awards, but you know, you get, people can act like that ain't no big thing. But then, like I said, Logic's getting pressed. I seen another rapper, I can't even remember his name. I just seen it on Bebo, a little white artist, and he's like the second coming of Eminem finally. Mm. So, you know. You have to look at what's happening and not be abused by corporate America because, once again, go back to the elements of what hip-hop is about. Hip-hop is about community at the ground level. It means that my neighbor is my is my, uh, my, my friend. My, my neighbor is my partner. I'm looking out for my neighbor, my community, my hood. That's what hood and all that really means. And people who sold drugs abuse the neighborhood. People who do drugs are can be a burden on the neighborhood, victim and abusers of the neighborhood. 
You see what I'm saying? All these negative images are bad. And if that's all they're feeding you every day, that's a problem. And then if I can go on, the, uh, what's up? Uh, 106. You know what? My bad. When I said that the black radio station list to that my kids is to is 107. So they play a wide variety of classic and current music. Then you got 106, which is the white station, the number one white station here. And if you listen to them, that's the kind of, I, I think all artists, I mean, all fans should go turn on the white radio station and listen to the variety of music played from different eras throughout the day. And even the DJs paying homage when those songs are played to those older artists and then turn on to your radio station and listen to four or five songs played all day long about nothing but the same negative content. And that's your life right there. And if you think that if you think that being an addict is great and you think that just just having no real emotional connection with women is where men should be and women thinking that running around trying to hit up the club all the time, stripping and popping and dropping. And that, that's all you want to do. Then, you know, you're going to lose. And that's just the bottom line. Hip hop was there to stop that and then stopped it for a long time. And now we're at a crossroads. Are we going to give, are we, are we almost done? Yeah, we, uh, we got about four minutes left. I was going to see oh, yeah, okay. like your final thoughts on, so we was going to like, I was going to wrap it up, but you got, you got some interesting points. So, with the whole uh, debate with the older generation versus the younger generation, people thinking that the older generation is just hating on how the music is now versus the older generation having a point where this just does not fit. I mean, overall, regardless of where hip hop evolves and changes, and, and there's well, there will always be standards, no matter yeah. what genre you go to, there are always standards to what is being made. And, you know, you may do it something different. Like, Red Man doesn't sound like Karis One. Uh, Onyx didn't sound like uh, Mob Deep. Uh, Tribe didn't sound like uh, De La Soul. Everybody's going to take their style and do something, contribute something different to hip hop. But there was always a standard set. And that's what's really, that's, you know, the quality of music, the standard of what hip hop is supposed to represent is not there anymore. And, you know, that's what the real conversation is, is that the media is taking something, it's trying to create that divide between the younger and older generation. But overall, it's just a matter of that they're not hip hop at the end of the day. Yeah. And it, there's no war. You know, I, I love the youth. And everybody who's ever done hip hop, we've always, you know, what's ODB's famous famous saying, you know, Wu-Tang is for the children. Mm -hmm. The music has always been for the children. So that's what I'm saying. They're flipping everything as far as the true values and giving you trash. And so I would just say, you know, go and do your own research. You got the Internet now. You got the entire library of hip hop. Just spend some time in the classics and understand and not just the 90s go through from the beginning all the way to the current and watch the transition and dig for those new artists and older artists putting out good content. It's out there. Don't let, don't just listen to what's on the radio because what's on the radio is, is not the true reflection of, of the music culture or the culture as a whole. It's just not, you're not getting content. They don't even play Kendrick or J Cole like they should. So, you know what I'm saying? They, they stealing from it. All right. So that's our time. Um, I've been Mr. Vinny Dangerous. Uh, and Master Don King. <laughs> yeah, this is my dad, Master Don King. Uh, tune in next week for another episode of the Dangerous Minds podcast. Follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you again soon. Hey, peace.